Hey, everybody. Dave here. And my friend, Manu, the 9.9 Newsstand, you remember us. Uh, we've got a very special guest today, something that well, I think everybody's going to want to hear. So let me just go ahead and introduce president of CGC, Matt Nelson. Hey, Matt. Hey, how y'all doing? Doing good. Doing good. A little cold, but otherwise, you know, yeah. can't complain. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's warm down here still. <laughs> so we had we had a cold snap for uh, for a few days, but you know, typically around here it doesn't get doesn't get very cold very often. So, no, no. Yeah, so it's right the winter out. Hi, Matt. Nice to meet you. I'm glad yeah, yeah, you have a chance to catch up. And yeah. you know, it's not like uh, anyone watching this might realize we're actually just warming up to the conversation together. It's not like we had a bunch of conversation backstage. We're kind of just hitting record and jumping into it. And I hope that's okay with you. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm here to answer the questions that I can and uh, you know, give some uh, transparency on what's been going on. So, well, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to start with. Well, first, I first want to say thank you, Matt. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for coming. You know, uh, ourselves, Dave, myself, the rest of the community, um, really eager to hear whatever you were able to provide us in, in, in the way of clarity. And then also, you know, coincidentally, today, the day that we're recording this, January 15th, is exactly one month mm. from the day that I put this story post up. And the story post just said, I discovered something. I don't know what to do with the information. I don't know what my moral obligation is. And then the next morning, I decided to make this post that described what I had um, found. And um, a lot has taken place since then. So I guess I just want to start with the first question. And that is like the last month, what's that been like for you on your end? Yeah, well, I'll speak to uh, both professionally and personally. Um, professionally, it's obviously been very stressful, uh, you know, dealing with this. But, uh, you know, things have, uh, you know, we, we've done a lot of investigation the past month. Um, and, uh, it you know, it seems like we have the situation contained. We have a good visibility on what's going on. And, um, and you know, from a personal perspective, though, I mean, as a collector, especially, you know, a CGC collector, and even before that, you know, it's really disheartening to see this happen. Um, you know, it's it's it not you know, just as a, it, for all collectors, you know, not just me, but, you know, the entire uh, hobby out there that's affected by this. And so that's, you know, it's very, very disturbing and very disheartening to see that. So, so, you know, it's, it's, it's unsettling on, on uh, different levels for me, but, you know, as professionally speaking, we're definitely moving forward with this, with a full investigation. And so, uh, um, you know, that's, that's the best we can do, but, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's been a tough road the past month. Sure. It's I'm been sure. a wild one, I'd imagine. Yeah. 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 Nobody, nobody's envying your position right now. I can guarantee <laughs> you that. Um, yeah. So I wanted to know how, how was the initial list composed of the books that were posted? You know, I think it was three, 350 or so. Yeah. So I can't really, uh, uh, explain, you know, how we arrived at the list, uh, you know, it's an ongoing investigation at this time. So I can't share how we determine how the books were impacted. But, you know, we saw trends. We noticed uh, we immediately started doing an investigation and saw trends. And uh, and obviously our reholder service was targeted. And mm -hmm. uh, and obviously there were certain books that were that were used uh, in this uh, in this scheme. So obviously the list that, that was published you can see, you know, a handful of books that were, you know, uh, numerous copies on that list. So it seems like it was a very specific uh, a group of books to the reholder service by an individual. Um, and uh, and uh, but we're not aware of any other books that were targeted besides these these 350 that we posted the list on. And people are able to submit uh, to CGC maybe if they do find some stuff, is there an email address for that to, to help you guys kind of? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The email is a report fraud at collectiblesgroup.com. So yeah, if there's any, if anybody has any information or any books they think uh, or that are on the list uh, or anything else really for that matter, um, they should email us uh, at that, that email address and uh, give us that information and we'll certainly investigate it. And you don't, you don't have to speak to this if you don't want to, but if you're comfortable, please, there's just, you know, there's this, I'll just give you some sentiment, right? That, uh, you know, and, and you've, you've heard this, I'm sure. People originally assumed, well, this must be like every submission from this guy's account. But then what happened was, you know, you could go into the CGC site and if you have a certain number for a book, you could go one digit up, one digit down and see if there were other books associated with that order. So then people were like, wait, there's more books here. So that's why that question was, how was that list composed? But I respect the fact that there's an ongoing investigation. We can't talk about that right now. Just wanted you to know why those questions were kind of being asked. And 
I assume as you are discovering more, I can only imagine the list will get updated both ways. If there are more books, it will get updated in that way. And as books are being found to be either legitimate or you know non-existent now because you're wiping them off the face of the earth, if you will, the, the list will get updated in that direction as well. So I'd assume the updates can go both ways. They, they can. Yeah. And like I said, we, you know, the, it, it, you know, I've been following the, the board posts, the thread, mm -hmm. uh, all the social media posts. There's a lot of people out there that are doing great work, trying to uncover things, uncover trends, you know, check scans. Um, so, you know, to date, there really, there, there hasn't been evidence of any books that have been tampered with outside of this original list. So that's a good mm -hmm. thing. Um, yeah. but yes, if, you know, it certainly, if anything else comes to light, you know, we'll, we'll publish that. Um, but so far it looks like it's, it's contained to these books. Uh, and you know, the, you know, there's books that are submitted for grading and, on an invoice, a group of books, and inevitably sometimes, uh, some of them come back in for reholder. Um, mm -hmm. maybe the books are sold off to different parties and then they resubmit uh, a book for a reholder for a custom label or something. So you'll see often a, a book. On an, you know, there's more books on an invoice, but only certain books may have fallen under the, uh, you know, may have been reholdered on that invoice. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and then, and this is just, this is just to say, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of ASM 300s on that list, right? And majority of them, I assume, are direct, but a handful of them are newsstand. We have friends that have purchased newsstands from this seller, you know, uh, dating from years back up until very recently. And then I try to I try to make this um, clear to people, and you could tell me if I'm wrong. And this is kind of a relief uh, in some sense. In some sense, you know, I would assume, and you could let me know where, where you stand on this. All of those 105 or whatever ASM 300s, those are not obviously all reholders, because if we understand the mechanism of sort of the, the scam, if you will, correctly, well, the clean book that was originally associated with the clean 9.8 obviously that gets left raw and it would be then cut out of its sleeve its inner well and resubmitted as just a standard submission so some of those books i imagine are actually 9.8s they were if you will the donor books resubmitted is that accurate to assume it's a possibility yeah we this list does not necessarily mean that all 350 books were tampered with Sure. Uh, we're not going to know for sure until we get them all back to examine, but it's our belief that there are some books on there that are not tampered with. We don't know how many, but yes, it's, it's, it's certainly possible that the list is actually smaller than 350. Right. Now, obviously being that it's an active investigation, I still uh, would be remiss if I didn't ask, is it possible that more than one person was involved in this? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Um, to date, uh, we believe there's only one individual involved. Um, yeah, obviously the investigation is ongoing, but to date, that is what we believe is the case. It's just one individual. Okay. And then just to follow up to that, have you discovered if that person was, or isn't in relation with a former or current CGC employee? No. Yeah. There's no connection. We found no connection with employees. We don't think any employees are involved in this. We think it's uh, one individual that has nothing to do with CGC or not employed by CGC or connected to CGC employees in any way. So it seems like it was a, a separate incident from, from, uh, from CGC. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that makes me feel better, at least inside a little bit, just knowing that it, you know, had nothing to do with anybody that was there or former employee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I know we're just moving right along, but I imagine you have a busy day, so we might as well just keep getting to it. So <laughs> sure. now, an update came out the other day in the in the frequently asked questions section of uh, you know the the kind of the news page that everyone's going to on the CGC site to to check the list and see what's going on. Now it seemed like it was an update because um, I don't remember having seen this verbiage before, and other people don't remember as well. But I don't think it is important if it was an update or not. It just became apparent to people two days ago. Um, because one of the questions we wanted to ask you was about compensation. You know, what does that look like? How is it decided? When is it effectively? So on and so forth. And we'll get into that. But that update said that um, if a book comes in and it is uh, determined to be some hanky panky in some way, shape or form, like whatever, right? If it seems like it needs to not exist anymore, the certain number needs to be wiped clean. You guys are going to keep that book as evidence, which does make sense. Um, and that'll lead me to what I'm going to say. And then, you know, to decide compensation, it would be based on fair market value, but even fair market value, um, it, it kind of is up to CGC entirely. That's what the, the 
not the fine print, but you know, when you go into the definition of fair market value as, um, as it would um, pertain to the guarantor, as the, 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 the verbiage refers to CGC, it kind of just says it's up to you guys to decide however you want to decide it. And, and, mm -hmm. and possibly no one has a say in that, but possibly there are exceptions made. I mean, there's obviously a human element to this as well. It's not just black and white. But the question that I'm asking then, because as soon as the first, when the list dropped and there was um, instruction given to how to submit the books, we had friends that immediately sent their books, right? And they at that time didn't know what the compensation structure would be or if the books were gonna be kept as evidence. They find themselves in kind of a vulnerable state right now. They're like, my goodness, you know, an example I'll give you, a friend bought an ASM 3098 newsstand in the mid 2021 for over 25,000 mm bucks. -hmm. The book now trades anywhere between 10 and $14,000. The mm -hmm. interesting thing about that is if you read what it says, fair market value would be, you know, being um, compensated for what it's worth today, which is already kind of a bummer because it's not like that individual was planning on selling in a down market. But then people say in defense to CGC saying fair market value on today's values, people say, well, this person could just go out and buy one of those books on the market. Well, it's not that easy when it's an ASM 3098 newsstand. And if there's one or two available, each sale is going to make the next one more expensive, who someone might get left holding the, the bag, not being able to purchase their book for the compensation provided. But the additional layer to that is the, the market is down, but also this individual who fraudulently or potentially fraudulently put ASM 3098 newsstands on the market is part of the reason that the prices were depressed because this rare book was perceived to be less rare because this guy put six or seven of them out there, or at mm. least I could account for you know a handful that people have bought. Mm. Doesn't that put people in a tough position? But that's not the question. The question is, <laughs> how do you think that fair market value is going to be decided should it be determined that a person's book is not legitimate? Yeah, it's well, we use data points like a GP analysis, go collect. Um, and obviously that's, you know, a number that changes. It can even change from week to week. Um, so we'll do our best to to determine what that is at that moment whenever we're uh, discussing this with the the person that owns a book that's in question. Um, and yeah, that, that could change over time because if somebody sends a book in six months from now, you know, that number could be different. But we want to be fair about it, very fair. And, you know, there's obviously things to consider like, uh, new stain additions, Canadian price variants, Mark Jeweler inserts. And so that will all be factored into the fair market value. Uh, so, you know, we'll do our best to to be fair in that compensation for that customer, you know, whatever the situation is. But we'll 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 broach that with with each person as we uh, as we come across it. Well, that's actually really nice to know. That means like there is going to be that I, ca I call it a human element. And that's for lack of a yeah. better phrase. Right. Like for each a conversation, individual that, a conversation that might feel like they don't have a say in it there is an opportunity to discuss this on an individual level book by book basis to to try to do right by the customer it sounds like that's what i'm hearing yes oh absolutely yeah yeah we're going to work with people on that and you know i think um with a few exceptions obviously a lot of those books like your bit you know spidey 300 uh non-newsstand 98 yeah there's copies out there um oh, those copies. are out there yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah. those you know th those i think can be replaced fairly quickly um and uh you know i'm sure the community you know the auction houses you know people that have that have access to these books uh you know will certainly you know we can all work together to try and you know get these replacement copies to these collectors as uh, as fast as possible um but those are all good points yeah and the uh, yeah the, I figured they're, yeah the mark jeweler nine eights are probably going to be the toughest cases for going forward yeah, yeah. There's yeah. there's a couple that uh, you know they're that are practically unicorns. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure what happens there, but <laughs> yeah, we'll have Man. to cross that bridge when we come to it. But uh, we we will be fair, absolutely fair, and work with the customers on that. Yeah. Speaking of specific books on the list, the one that really raised the red flag to me, and I know a lot of people out there in the community are sharing the same concerns. The Amazing Fantasy 15 signature series signed by Stan Lee. Can you explain how and why that book's on the list? Um, it's, you know, it, what I said earlier uh, applies here, which is that we cast the net mm -hmm. and we don't, we don't expect every book on that list to be uh, tampered with. Um, 
I I have not seen that amazing fantasy yet, and we'll make that determination once we see it. Um, but I think there's a chance that it's not tampered with. Um, okay. So I, I think that would that would probably sidestep all the questions of how it would be done. Yeah. Um, but uh, but that certainly would be a more difficult one to do because it's a higher priced book, it's a lower grade, it's got signatures on it. it there's a lot of you know things involved that would make I guess this 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 fraud more difficult for that particular book. So uh, I'll know better once I see it. But uh, my hope is that it's not one of the ones that uh, are tampered on the list. Yeah, I I agree. I I mean <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not either. Uh, but what you said is true. It's like, you know, it's, that's a difficult one to figure out. And those are the questions that right now we can't, we can't speak to at the moment, but that's what kind of the community's thinking. Like, how the heck does this happen with the yellow label? Like, what's the switcheroo there? What is the deal? So hopefully there's nothing wrong, but hopefully if there was something, maybe we get to a point, maybe we don't, but maybe we do get to a point where you get to speak about it. Like, well, this is what we discovered. This is what happened there these are the changes because of that, because that is going to be an interesting one to get to the bottom of. And I know there are things right now that haven't been some, been substantiated. The books are not on the list. The affiliations and relationships are being kept quiet because it would be um, not responsible to just make assumptions. Um, but yeah, if there is something affecting the yellow labels, that's gonna be really interesting for us to hear about later down the line when we know more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and when I know more, I'll I'll certainly uh try to clarify that point. But uh yeah, yeah it see it seems yeah, my hope is that it's not one of the affected books. So uh, you know, but I'll know for sure when I see it. Wasn't one of them signed crossed off the list already? I think it was like the amazing Spider-Man that was signed, or was that not a yellow label? Mm, bad memory. Yeah, I think that was a blue label. Is that the eight oh, I believe? Maybe yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah, that one's yeah, I believe that one's cleared. So that one's that one's okay. I okay. Just, yeah. I want to roll it back just a sec. Um, you had touched on it already about uh, you know, kind of keeping an eye on what what's being said on the board. Um, somebody that I've I've been working with, like he's been you know, kind of letting me know what he's discovering. This guy comic was he's been doing brilliant work. Um, there's a lot of stuff on there, and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get from you. Are you guys looking at specific what? you know, people are dropping on the boards with their investigative work. Like, is that really being looked at in a serious way? Because I don't know if you've seen some of his work, but he's been posting the ping pong of the sales. Comic whiz. By chance. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. His dad is great. Yeah. No, we've been following it. So we, we employed, uh, you know, we have a lot of people working on this. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of them is an investigative company called crawl. Uh, and they're, they're a very high level investigative company. That's, that's, uh, their 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 niche is exactly this kind of thing so they've actually been following the thread in addition to us and compiling that information in addition to their own information so everything that's been on that thread has been very helpful yeah. uh and you know and i certainly you know we'll keep monitoring it and uh you know and see what else turns up but yeah it's it's been a very very useful helpful thread with a lot of good information and so i'm very appreciative of that that's I'm, I'm glad to hear that because there's so much information on there and a lot of it is really well documented. Oh yeah. Yeah. The community is great. I mean, that's, you know, uh, one of the things I'm so proud of in this, in this hobby is that, you know, we're the protector CGC, you know, we identify ourselves as a protector among other things, but, but the collectors are also protectors as well. You know, they, they serve as a, as the a police role uh, in the role of police sometimes. <laughs> And, uh, you know, maybe it's a good versus evil thing uh, among us collectors that you don't find in other collectibles. But when things like this happen, it's it's always uh, it's 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 good to see the community come together and try to to help solve and get to the bottom of, of these things. So, it, you know, I'm very proud of that. So it's it's it, yeah, they're, they're, the outreach has been great the past month <clears throat> with everybody reaching out to us. So very understanding about the situation we're in. And so, uh, and it's, it's, it's great to see them also putting the time in and the effort to try and, uh, to help us get to the bottom of this. Oh, yeah. And this guy right here next to me, he's, he's one of those people that's super protective. I mean, I am too, but Manu yeah. is Mr. Detail. So, yeah. Well, know. actually on that note, I, I know we still, we're still in the middle of this interview process, but we, uh, you know, since you guys broke the story, uh, and obviously I'm here interviewing with you. Uh, we, we felt it would be a good idea to present you with an award, both of you. 
So what I have here is a very first time we've done this before. So I've got a plaque for you guys. I've got one for each of you. <laughs> My uh, goodness. <laughs> this, this one's for Manu. But this one is, yeah, the Hobby Hero Award. So this is basically an, a recognition of, of your service to the hobby for, you know, uncovering this and, and helping us, you know, take care of the situation and, and, and being on the lookout for, you know, anything that's going on out there. So this is, this is for you guys. Thank well, you very much for for you know what you've done and and continue to do so uh yeah thank you and this is that we'll, we'll get, <laughs> we'll get <laughs> that is that is so greatly appreciated and yeah. uh unexpected and very, very appreciated and matt you know this means we're friends now i don't know if you knew that but that's what that means now so you're stuck yeah. with me yeah. wow right. so this yeah. is uh, unexpected and, and very uh appreciated wow that is yeah. very cool that is yeah, very cool. absolutely. Appreciate you guys that. deserve it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, you know, again, for everything you're, you've done with this. And, uh, uh, and yeah, so, uh, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get Man, that. That was, that was unexpected, beautiful surprise. And I think that's, that's so nice because obviously, like you said, we're still in the middle of this interview, right? But the interview is, is shaped and written the way that it is because it's a sensitive subject. We can't just freely, willy-nilly discuss it. There's a lot on the line. You know, CGC is a big organization. You have a lot of responsibility. A lot of people um, are making sure that things are done in the right way. You don't want to jeopardize an investigation. We completely understand that. But the introduction of that human element, right? Just being able to, as Matt Nelson, the collector, as Matt Nelson, the person that for decades and decades has been dealing with and in comic books, a person that cares about the community, it's nice to talk to that person. Yes, we want these questions answered, but we also know we can't get those. It's not like we're at a bar having a drink, discussing this stuff, right? <laughs> Maybe months from now, we can get that, but right now it's different. But right. it's still really nice to connect with the human individuals that are feeling this, understanding the, 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 the stresses or the anxieties that the collector is feeling. You know, some people are not affected by this directly, right? They haven't purchased any of these books or books are on the list, but they're a part of this community. And like Dave said, you know, we really do really, really love and care about this community. Like it, it's, it's where we spend the majority of our time. In mm -hmm. fact, you know, it's not a career. It's not just a hobby. We call it a hobby. Um, and, and like the plaque says, hobby hero, and that's mm -hmm. beautifully endearing thing, but it's so much more than a hobby, you know, like we wake up and think about comics, we're going to sleep yeah. and thinking about comics, you know, yeah. it's, my life. it's my life. <laughs> it's yeah. it's, it's my life. literally Dave's life. And Matt, it's your life as well. You probably have a whole life outside of it as well. But you know, yeah. well, it was it was that way for me too. I mean, before it became a career, it was what I spent all my free time on, just like everybody else. And even now, I still spend a lot of my free time on it. You know, it's it's what I've dedicated my life to. And, you know, to, to a point which you were making earlier is that, you know, here at CGC, even though, you know, we're sometimes painted as the, you know, the big corporate, you know, company that the faceless company or the company that doesn't care. You know, I mean, the truth is, is that, you know, I've been here for over 10 years now and, and working closely with CGC since the beginning. And it's still, you know, what goes on every day here is is still, it, it's like, um, it hasn't changed. The grading room is still full of graders who love comics, are passionate about it. They've been working with us for many years. Uh, and um, and they're just as concerned about this as the people on the outside. And, and they, and they, you know, every day it's a pleasure to work with them. And we're the ones that are actually calling the shots and, you know, grading the books, giving the grades, you know, all these changes that are coming through like, uh, you know, new stand editions or new labels. This is all coming from us. You know, this yeah. is not being, you know, uh, uh, you know, we're, we're not being directed to do this. And so, you know, Blackstone has done a great job of, you know, leaving the talent to do their job. You know, they've never changed the culture of the, of the company in that regard. So, you know, we're, we're just like everybody else on the outside. And uh, no matter how big we get, it's still the same group of geeks that are waking up and going to work every day and grading comic books and talking about comics and, and, and you know, go, getting through the good stuff and the bad stuff alike. And, you know, and that's life, but, you know, it's, it, but it is, it is a pleasure. I'm, I'm very, very thankful that, you know, I can call this a career you know, and, uh, and, uh, and be able to spend my time doing what I've always loved to do uh, in my spare time. So that's, I'm, I'm very happy about that, but I wanted to make, I wanted to make that point in case anybody feels like, uh, you know, what's going on over here is, is very, you know, very corporate minded and very, <laughs> you know, well, it's, 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 it's still comic collectors over here. And that's a very important point to make, you know, I mean, I'm one of the people that discusses CGC as a sometimes a, appears to be a cold corporation like i openly talk about it in that way um 
because it would appear to be sometimes, right? But it, that's why it's so important to have this dialogue, this conversation, you know, have that element shine through because I don't know your whole history. I simply thought that you were the founder um, and I maybe that is true uh, or a co-founder, maybe that is or isn't true, but I was doing a little bit of reading. You know, CCS was originally your company. Like mm -hmm. you were in, you were, you know, restoring comic books and in and, and that side of things and that company we all know CCS was the pressing division of CGC. I only recently found out or maybe recently cemented the idea that that was CGC acquiring your company, bringing it in home, and then later absorbing that as a just a branch of CGC. I don't think it's any longer called CCS. And now you're president, right? So your, your baby that you raised, CCS, oh, yeah. is still very much a part of the company. It's just oh, been yeah. fully oh, it's, brought it's in. Yeah, it's it, yeah, it's an interesting history. Yeah, I wasn't here since the beginning. You know, they opened in two thousand, and I had been restoring for about four or five years prior to that. I worked at a comic store in college. I obviously, you know, was mm -hmm. reading them, collecting them. Uh, I had a fascination with working on them, and then CDC opened, and it gave me our. It, it opened the door to a lot of new processes that I could do because my whole thing was all about enhancing books. You know, re restoring them and eventually pressing them, doing restoration removal when CDC opened. And so, yeah, my my whole company was kind of built or eventually kind of built around CDC. And so when they bought the company and brought me in in 2013, yeah, it was my baby that was 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 being incorporated into that. So it was it was a it was a, 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 a it was very, you know, I was very proud of that. Mm -hmm. um, but it also going forward, it became my mission to make sure that that was preserved and uh, and also in transitioning over into the grading side of things in CDC uh, to actually bolster that in the best way I could. You know, I had all these ideas coming in to it and a lot of them we've implemented since then and a lot more still to come. Um, but yeah, this whole this whole time, this whole thing has just been uh, my very close, very near and dear to my heart. So, uh, you know, that's that that essence has never left you know, CGC, it's never left the grading room. That's everything is, is based around that. So, you know, when things like this happen, it's very personal and, uh, and it's something that we all take very seriously. And cause the customer is, is definitely the most important thing, uh, in the, in the whole grand yeah. scheme of things, you know, so, uh, we definitely, you know, we want to look out for them. They're number one. So, uh, th this is why we're taking this very seriously. And, um, you know, and, and yeah, continuing to uh, to to serve as a protector for the hobby, and obviously with with everyone else's help, uh, you know, it's been it's been a wild ride so far. It's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, it's been a heck of a journey for a company. Sorry, Dave, carry on. Yeah. Oh, um, before we get to like kind of like what's coming, uh, you know, going forward, I do want to ask. So books get sold on countless platforms, right? We but some of the biggest ones are a you know, corporation structured. So they have structure. Are you guys working with heritage and eBay, um, any of the Instagram consigners, comic link, comic connect to try and kind of raise awareness to maybe the buyers because, you know, eBay is anonymous to everybody except eBay. Uh, heritage is anonymous to everybody except heritage. So if they, are you working with them to try and reach out to people that might've bought books on the platform that came from this list? Yeah, I can't disclose who we're working with, mm -hmm. um, but we are working, communicating with a number of third parties uh, to in this investigation. So, yeah, I can't name names, but sure. everyone, you know, the, the people are definitely working with us. Um, you know, like the collectors, I think a lot of people uh, uh, understand the, the, you know, the gravity of the situation. Uh, of you know, e even though we're talking about. 350 books out of 10 million collectibles graded by CGC. It's, it's minuscule, you know, but, but it's, it's still, it's, it's, it's a very serious thing that, that needs to be nipped in the bud now. And, uh, and so, you know, everyone seems to be, you know, obviously aware of that we're, you know, we all share the same concern because we're all yeah. tied together. The collectors, these platforms you're talking about dealers, CGC, we're, it's all intertwined. And mm -hmm. so we're, we're all, we're all fighting the same battle for the same reason. So, you know, it's been, you know, it's been, uh, yeah, we've, we're definitely working with, uh, communicating with, with people, um, third parties, I guess you could say, but yeah. Uh, yeah, at this juncture, I just can't disclose who it is at this point. Okay. And, no, but that's really good. Yeah. And, and go collect put out their statement. I really enjoy to see what they're doing with, with these certain numbers. And I, I, you know, one of my ideas going forward is a website that maybe every time a book trades hands, doesn't matter if it's sold or if it literally gets traded, should be able to log in the search so we can see where that book went. You know, if I'm buying a book from 
heritage and then i know it was sold in comic link two years ago it, it'd be nice to know these things just to track where this book originated from oh yeah yeah that's a great idea yeah i saw that announcement too so that's that's awesome i mean go collect is obviously paying attention to the situation and adjusting accordingly so uh that's that's a good thing yeah this is i think all this is going to lead to a lot better stuff for everybody and that's I, that's so. you know sorry you you know you say cgc um is a protector of the hobby protector of the community and that's very much what we want right and it's just like um because sometimes people will say if it, you you guys keep talking about this what do you want you wanted to go back to raw books no that was a foolish thought we understand why third party grading exists and then you know first it came out of a let's say a necessity to create some sort of um uh, you know something to trust in so you don't have to take a seller's word for it it could be just a uh you know a hobbyist that only sells every now and then not necessarily familiar with the ways of restoration so on and so forth so there's a lot of books that third party grading is super important for and then it just sort of you know turned into a part of our community of, of our hobby if you will and it became fun you know people just start grading books because it's a it's a hell of a time to go for the grade you know can we hit the nine eight on this thing and then you kind of get you you get lost in the fun of it all right like there was a really serious reason for it to exist and then it becomes fun which is brilliant for business right because cgc blossoms into a brand into an actual like you know something that you you perceive in the hobby as as an actual brand you know the way that you would look at um a publisher or something you know the people that you feel like you're actually buying into or collecting into we can't be foolish here cgc ended up becoming a part of that and 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 so i tell people it's like no guys i i love cgc i've said this for a long time like cgc and i you know it's sometimes a complicated relationship but i love cgc <laughs> and i i absolutely want it to succeed a world without third-party grading without a trusted third-party grader um would be quite challenging to navigate you know if you want to buy an expensive book from the 70s raw come on you're gonna yeah. need someone's assistance and that's why we're just trying to keep the conversation going keep these points being made have these discussions with someone in your position so that we can get back to a place i think back to a place is the proper way to say it um where you know i don't think it's necessarily safe to blindly trust anyone but to have that confidence reinstilled you know because we do want CGC to be that partner of the community. And I've said this a lot. The community, the collecting community is going to exist whether or not there is one third party grader, three third party graders competition or not. Right. But the third party grading companies need a collecting community so that they can have a business so that they can have a viable business. The third party grading companies don't want to just, you know, not take care of the community because it has to be it, they have to feed each other. Yeah, you know, there is a reason. For, yeah. And so I just anyway, I'm rambling. I just want to say I love <laughs> that we were able to get, you know, underneath kind of the surface black and white talk and really discuss why CGC is something that we the community appreciates and why CGC recognizes that it's really important for them to fix anything that might be wrong so that that relationship could work smoothly into the future. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we said it before. Yeah, the, co the collecting community is the foundation of all this and uh, we're here to service them so you know it's it's very important that you know that's taken care of because you can't have one without the other you know it is a very synergistic relationship and uh and yeah cgc is offered you know when, when they started it was just great in books and all the things that have come out of it since then you know the sig series program and you know the registry sets and all this there's so many facets to it that make it so much more fun than just yeah. having your book graded and selling it or whatever you know put it you know put mm -hmm. having the books or you know now people you know the 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 last it seems like the last few years a lot of the collectors that have come in to the space uh have different uh perceptions i guess of certification of uh uh just uh every, everything that uh i don't know about valuation but they're but they're you know, like our holders they the holders themselves now become very important to people you know it's i, I you know like 20 years ago people were, it was just a, a means to an end you just put the book in a holder so you could you make it liquid and sell it and now it's obviously become a, a centerpiece uh or, or rather a display piece for people and so they want to make sure that the, the holders are perfect the labels are you know perfectly aligned the books are mm -hmm. centered yeah. Um, you know, so it's, it's got all, all these facets and all these little, uh, you know, these, uh, uh, roots have developed, uh, from, uh, that, have, you know, f f that have branched off from what the original idea was. And it's created so much, so many cool things that are associated with certification. So, you know, it's, it's definitely a, yeah, it's, it's great. I would love to come into the hobby at this point, uh, <laughs> first 25 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot more stuff to, to do.
You know, there so, are there's that might uh, Dave. I think that's probably going to lead nicely into the next question. If you yeah, want to get into that, yeah, yeah, I I will, and I just want to reiterate uh, two two things. Collectors uh, of all things, but co comic collectors are very specific people. So, yeah, when there's a label off or you know a hairline crack in the case. You could show it to a hundred people. You show it to one comic book person, they're gonna be like, "Oh, yep, yep, yep." yep. Uh, so, and the right. other thing I just wanted to reiterate, because over my left shoulder, CGC and collectors, symbiotic relationship. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, Absolutely. that does bring me to uh, my next question. So, I know it takes a little time, but what changes, if any, are going to be made to the reholder process and the case itself? Yeah. So, well, we're always looking for ways to improve our holders in our process. That's always been the case since day one. This is just another part of that discussion now going forward. Mm -hmm. um, it's, right now, today specifically, I don't have really anything to announce in terms of any changes that are taking place. But uh, we're looking at everything. Everything's on the table. Um, you know, so we'll, you know, as that information becomes available, we'll make that public. Uh, you know, but we're certainly looking into a lot of different things. Um, and so, you know, uh, one, one change that we've made is that the, uh, the reholder, uh, service is now being reviewed by a senior grader, uh, or uh, multiple senior graders, all of them. Uh, mm -hmm. so that's something that, you know, we've, we've covered at this point. So, you know, anything coming in for reholder is going to be evaluated, not just, you know, it was a service used to replace the case. That's yeah. what it was. Um, you know, but clearly, you know, it's e the books themselves need to be evaluated by a high level grader that is able to determine if, you know, that book matches that grade, if there's any other issues involved. And it's not just about tampering. It's also about, you know, making sure that the book is, you know, not damaged in the holder, uh, you know, things of that nature. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's one thing that we've that we've implemented to uh, to, uh, you know, a change that we made in, in light of what's happened. So um, but yeah, and anything else that comes down the pike, uh, we're certainly going to be talking about uh as they come so uh yeah we're definitely looking at a lot of different things right now there, gosh there, i want to ask you a question i know i can't though so i'm going to wait until there's more there's just, uh. <laughs> there have been uh there have been some great suggestions throughout the community and and even our live streams about you know serial number on the inside on the inner well you know some tamper proof yeah. thing and and one of my suggestions was why not have any book that comes in from from unpackaging it to grading to slabbing photographed every single step of the way so that if i send you a book and it comes back nine two but it's got a tear on there and you go back and you look at the photo mm -hmm. when you unpackaged it then you can either put the blame on me be like that's how we got it or the blame's on us you yes. know i i just think an i something like that with you know because images and they don't take up file size anymore and we have 25 terabyte hard drives that are the size of my <laughs> yeah. thumb now. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. That's, and, and there are uh, parts of that process that we have, that we do now that we've been mm -hmm. doing, but yeah, that's certainly uh, a, a great idea to have, you know, imaging through all steps uh, and not, not just for, yeah, just for what you were talking about damages that occurs, you know, before it arrives, while it's here, you know, before it ships out, after it ships out, you know, I mean, there's, there's uh yeah, it really helps uh, in so many ways uh, to have the imaging like that. So yeah, it's a great idea. We're, we're totally open for any idea. You know, we've had a lot of ideas thrown at us privately. Obviously there's someone mm -hmm. boards, obviously a lot of discussion going on internally about that. So yeah, I, I welcome any ideas, any ideas anybody has, um, you know, for anything going forward, sure. we're always, always open for suggestions and not just with the holder, but the website, anything like that, you know, mm -hmm. except for the grading. We got that down pat. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we got that locked up. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, <I'm> always, <laughs> some people might disagree. Um, but uh, yeah, no. If you uh, hadn't said that right after this, this after, after we started recording, I was going to show you a couple of things. I wanted to get your second opinion. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, there's always there. There will always be descent until the until the end of the earth. You know, there will always be descent on grade. But uh, I, and look, I'm, I'm, I'm always, you know, when I'm at shows um, or any situation where I'm around, you know, I, I'm always willing to have a discussion about a book or, you know, how we grade certain defects or anything like that. That's that's part of my job mm -hmm. is to is to stay in communication with the collectors and the dealers and and stay in touch with you know, their thoughts, their concerns about the grading process or really anything, sure. um, you know, because that is that's 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 the 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 parameters that we've set over the past 23 years 
uh, are the ones that we're bold into. Those are the ones that we have to stick with because that's what people are used to. That's that's the establishment. So, um, you know, I'm always looking for you know, feedback on that. So, uh, you know, yeah, it's, you know, any, if anybody has any questions about anything, you're always welcome to, 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 uh, to let me know. Yes. <laughs> I have one. And yeah. listen, I'll just say this now, if this isn't going to make the video, that's fine. I just have to ask you, cause I've got you on the screen. And if you want to have a laugh about it or talk about it, we can, but this is, this goes, you know, about the grading and stuff. I have a reel that I made because I saw a video of you saying that 9.9 are allowed to have a color breaking tick. Now, you said it, that's the truth. You wrote the book, right? Mm -hmm. So a 9.9, now, now look, there is not a single collector I know that would ever, if they purchased a 9.9 .9 and the thing showed up with the color breaking tick, oh, they're gonna be angry because we have this, you know how it is, there's people that run around thinking 9.8 shouldn't even have ticks. We know better, 9.8s <laughs> can have ticks. But that was a compelling thing for you to say, so the reel did really work well. I was like, I'm gonna take this man saying this <laughs> because this is going to be a shocker for people and it did that right and it was an eye opener but here's the and obviously all of this can be struck unless you think it's in good you know conversation to say yeah. with an ultimate fallout 4 4700 9.8s right yeah. in the how are there how are there matt mr matt nelson <laughs> how are there no 9.9s of an ultimate fallout 4 what is going on here yeah that's a good question that's a good question I don't know. We 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 do scrutinize the line between nine eight and nine nine gets pretty tight, and we you know we uh, it, it's it's funny because you know in people's minds you know that that don't grade for a living, you know they 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 look at nine eight nine nine and go well the difference between the two has got to be tiny and and to some degree it is but there's actually a good bit of stuff we allow in nine eight um, that we don't in nine nine or ten and like printing defects is a big one. Um, and so, uh, now ultimate fallout's obviously a newer book that doesn't exhibit, actually it does exhibit, um, printing defects, but they usually press out. Um, yeah, but, you're right. The poly bag <laughs> crease I'd imagine mm -hmm. one of the things we're talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Usually those books grade like seven, five to eight, five raw. You I know, buy and, them all the time, crack them yeah, out, press right, them and know. it's a nine, eight all of a yeah, sudden. It gets, yeah. It gets the nine, eight, you know, but there's like little couple, I think there's a couple little, you know, like, like a color and ink rub, which is really common on modern books. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, you know, those usually keep it down. So, you know, but there's, yeah, there is, uh, you know, are there some nine nines among those nine eights yet possibly, and maybe it just requires a little extra attention, uh, you know, but there's, you know, an idea that we've, we've bandied about for a while now is eventually when we have the bandwidth is opening up a nine, nine pre-screen, um, for, you know, basically anything, probably holder books. Did that, did yeah. that information just get, I, sh I shouldn't have cut you off. I got excited. You carry on Matt. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, that's it. Yeah, it is an exciting idea. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, like I said, it would require, you know, it, it's it's so much harder to screen for nine nines because it's supposed criteria. to be. Yeah, the criteria is for, I mean, if, if there's a book <laughs> out there that's in a nine nine holder, you know, people are looking that book up and down, looking for every little tiny thing on the, you know, checking every little corner, every corner, you know, every up and down the spine. So the criteria is very, very stringent for nine nines. And so yeah. You know, I envision the screening service being something that would be very labor intensive and there would probably be a you know cost associated with that. But you know, people I think would love it because yeah, there's probably there's a bunch of you know nine eights out there that could possibly achieve nine nine. Um and so I'm that's... supposed to be hard on you today, Matt, and you're saying these things and, and you've got <laughs> you you're speaking to my heart, you know. A nine nine pre screen, I, yeah. I I will be the, the guinea pig. <laughs> for the yeah. first submissions into that pre-screen yeah um, yeah there's Absolutely, some books yeah. that i literally have held back because i don't want them to just get slapped with a nine eight i think they're deserving yeah. of better yeah it's well the, the time may come uh to to find out for sure if it's possible or not so uh wow. you know again one, one of the few ideas that you know we still would like to implement but i think you know i mean we follow the market trends and uh and when they when they when they happen and when they start to you know to gain some momentum, that's when we try to 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 go there. And you know, one example is like the newsstand editions. You know, nobody twenty years ago when CDC opened that just wasn't a thing. Uh, and so you know, we started identifying newsstand editions. Um, and so yeah, this is something along those lines where you know when CDC opened twenty three years ago, it was mostly vintage comics that were being submitted. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, if you got a nine, eight on a silver age book, well, God, that was it. I mean, you were lucky, yeah. you know, you, a nine, <laughs> nine, you know, but now obviously 23 years later, we've got a tremendous modern market, ultra modern market. That's, that's, that's grown, you know, in leaps and bounds. And so, yeah, now the, the nine, nine question is a lot more pertinent 
And so, you know, I see I see where the market's going with that. And so we'd like to answer that with something that kind of gives a little bit more clarity on on, you know, on the grade. You know, is it is it is it is there a way to get this book to a nine nine? Could it be a nine nine? So, yeah, we'll you know, as soon as we kind of get out of uh, not this, but, you know, we got the pulp lunch coming, a few other things. But mm -hmm. that's definitely something I want to dive into next or as soon as possible. Um, <clears throat> I wanted wow. to. Yeah, that breaking news. Um, <laughs> yeah, two, 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 uh, two breaking news in the video. <laughs> yeah. That's um, super cool. I want to stay in close communication with you about that, if at all possible. That's awesome. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so going forward, is there anything else that we can look for in changes to kind of tighten it up? I mean, look, nothing is 100% foolproof. You know, there's somebody said, you know, when, when there's something to be scammed, someone will always attempt it. Uh, most unsuccessfully, but going forward, any other safeguards that we're going to see in place, uh, you know, things to be, I know you can't be fully transparent with everything that CGC does on the inside, but to me personally, the, my biggest concern is sometimes a lack of transparency of mm -hmm. why, you know, why this happened, how this happened, how, you know, all those questions, the who, who, what, when, where, and why, but um, okay. anything else you can speak to on, on going forward. Yeah, I mean, it's you know this this situation, even though it it involves a small number of books and one individual, it's you know obviously a very serious situation. This was a this was a very sophisticated and deceptive tampering that was going on, um, and we intend on uh, prosecuting this individual to the fullest extent of the law. And I think the you know obviously because that's the right thing to do, it also sends a message to the community that CGC is not going to allow its service to be taken advantage of to defraud collectors. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this is a, a deterrent, you know, going forward that, you know, if this happens again, we'll do exactly the same thing, um, you know, and hopefully it won't. Um, and, you know, obviously all the, all the improvements that, you know, a company can make on their security measures, their, their internal processes, inevitably there's always going to be people out there trying to scheme the system sure. you know? so this is not going to end there's there's you know i'm sure there'll be people down the road that are trying different things so you know but we want to send a clear message that we're not going to tolerate this behavior and it, you know anything anything that is decept uh, it fraudulent it we're going to pursue them to the full extent of the law so uh you know in the meantime we'll carry on with the investigation and as more information uh comes out that we can share we'll absolutely share that and uh, any uh, anything else that's related to it, uh, you know, on, on a positive note, we'll share that as well. Yeah. And uh, but it seems like the situation is contained so far, and obviously we'll keep monitoring. Uh, you know the the people out there that are doing their own part to to uncover information. And uh, you know anybody again, if anybody has any information that they want to share with us, uh, I got the emails report fraud at collectiblesgroup.com. Please reach out uh, uh, there uh, to give us the information that you think is pertinent to this or anything really for that mm -hmm. matter. And uh, and we'll get through this and um, onwards and upwards and uh, yeah. You know, yeah, get back on track. <laughs> yeah, and, and and hopefully you know it'll be dealt with in the way that you just said, and you know people kind of go back to being at least very safe in the knowledge that they know their collectibles are protected. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I have faith that you know this this is small in nature in terms of the number. And it's contained. So I, you know, based on everything that I've seen uh, through the investigation so far. So, so I, I, I feel good about this. I feel good about, uh, you know, how, how we're handling it. And, you know, sure, I, I would love to, to be completely transparent with everyone and talk about this, but obviously we can't with yeah. the investigation. But, uh, but yeah, rest assured that CDC is doing everything in its power to, uh, to, to make sure that uh, this is, this is taken care of. The collectors mm -hmm. are taken care of that are affected by this and going forward that we will uh, prevent this from happening again. That's great to hear. That's um, what we're looking forward to. Absolutely. Yeah. Manu, did you have anything else you wanted to ask Matt? I mean, I just know once the video posts, much like I would probably do if I weren't the one on the screen, but the one watching, there's going to be a bunch of people that are going to say, you didn't ask this, you didn't ask that rightfully. Right. And I'm not, sure. I'm saying I'd be one of those people as well. And so I think that's going to be really interesting to see. And I hope, you know, the three of us will be reading those questions and taking all of that into consideration. And, and as this thing resolves itself and we get to that place that we all very much want to be at, where we can just go on having fun, having faith in the system and, and you know, not being so worried. I don't think being cautious is bad. I think being a cautious, sophisticated collector is a great thing. And this gives yes. everyone reason to be more sophisticated. That's great. 
But uh, I look forward to seeing what those questions are. I look forward to seeing my friends tell me that I didn't ask this, I didn't do that. And, you know, I got too excited about things as I do. And, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure there'll be some, I'm sure there'll be some, you know, like, why do you say this? Why do you say that? Yeah. Of course, of course. And, and but, but it's important for those to be there. And I encourage them to be there because while we're having this conversation, there's a bunch of things that's not occurring to us. You know how it is. You hit stop on the tape and then you're like, oh, I missed that thing. That's that one thing. But maybe yeah. there'll be an opportunity down the line yeah. for you to come yeah. back on, have this conversation. And uh, the transparency, the openness, I'm, you know, means so much. And we appreciate yes, it's it. It's very lot. important. Well, that's, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I, I, I figured that this, this would be, uh, uh, you know, not only providing some transparency, but just, you know, getting out there and talking about it. I think this goes a long way towards, you know, giving people a little reassurance that, you know, that we're on this and we're not ignoring them and we're not, you know, uh, just you know uh, taking this lightly or anything like mm -hmm. that so yeah. yeah i definitely want to come on and make that point and and obviously to uh again congratulate you guys for for the work that you did here was it manu was it you that was it you that specifically broke the or the, discovered the okay yeah 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 <laughs> well, well well thank you yeah and and dave i mean you guys you know just thank you for the great job and uh you know i'm sure you'll uh you know you'll keep uh you'll keep going and I couldn't have figured anything out if it wasn't for Dave because I had I was like I need a picture of this one sale and it was over 90 days I knew something was wrong I was like there's no way this Mark Jewelers book would have sold for two grand there's something yeah. stupid going on with this cert number and you know what shout out to to the pricing services for having that column reorganized apparently automatically after in the CGC system that cert number was updated to a Mark Jewelers right yeah. so Thanks. that communication yeah is what triggered it. And then, uh, yeah, I called Dave and I said, Dave, I need you to use Terapeak. I need you to find this picture. And obviously <laughs> once I saw the picture of the previous sale, it was apparent, right? Cause we're detail guys. You look at two books, yeah. you could tell they're not the same book. It became obvious. And that's when I made the post the next morning. Yeah. And, Amazing. and Amazing. yeah, it was, you know, he calls me frantically and he's like, I need this photo. And then he's like, it's the same book. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then he sent me the photos. I'm like, it's not, I mean, he said it's not the same book. And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's not the same book. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. It's crazy. This craziness, you know, well, I'm so glad you spotted it. So that's, that's uh yeah. Kudos to you guys for, for doing this. So uh, yeah. Th and thanks again for having me on. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll, we, we'll definitely, you know, circle back around at some point in the future and Look maybe do a round two and, and discuss uh, where we're at then. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Matt, yeah. I want to say, Thank you. Thank you for coming on. And, you know, when there is something to talk about, we will have you back on. And for anybody that's watching, I'll throw the uh, email address down in the description below that Matt, uh, you know, gave off if you need to report anything. Um, and you guys know where to find CGC. It's very easy. CGCcomics.com. Um, yeah. But yeah. yeah. Oh, there was one more thing, too. I just wanted to clarify. Mm -hmm. I think there was some uh, discussion about... Um, the search being taken off of the uh, the census, or rather the the lookup function. So I just yeah. want to clarify that you know, yes, they're 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 not being accessible. I guess once they've been uh, sent back to us and they're right. you know struck through on the list, they're going to be taking off of the uh, the lookup and the census. But that's you know, that's that's how we normally operate with books that have been you know cracked out and resubmitted. You know because we obviously don't want to affect the census numbers. And so, you know, that's just normal protocol, but mm -hmm. we don't delete that information internally. We have that all that information stays exactly where it's at. So internally, we'll still have access to all that information. So I don't want anybody to be concerned that we're erasing, uh, you know, inf important information or information sure. related to this, right. to this uh, incident. And and also the uh, the books are going to be that are being returned to us. We're going to keep them in their original holders. We're not cracking them out. We're not going to regrade them or anything like that. We're going to keep them as evidence. Mm -hmm. um so untampered un, untainted evidence and then obviously you know proceed with the with the reimbursement uh on the fair market value so again i want to just say that to put people's minds at ease that we're doing everything can everything we can to 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 preserve all this stuff for the investigation can i ask you a question that just came to mind after what you just said sure if somebody is submitting a 181 that's suspected to be tampered with, but if you're going to keep them unopened for the sake of in, uh, evidence, how would you determine whether it's a tampered book that has a stamp or not inside without opening it? Mm, that's a good question. Um, so we've got, uh, I can't really divulge uh, exactly our process of evaluating, but we have uh, a lot of tools a lot of information that's uh, available to us internally okay. uh cool. so yeah that's that that is that's is an excellent question but 
uh, yes, we will we will be you know uh, preserving that uh, as evidence certainly. But you know, re regard even if you know if there's um, you know the the customer is going to be uh, reimbursed. You know, if there's yeah. a book that comes in and you know that's we, the important part. Yeah, we we suspect, but you know maybe it involves tampering with the other. You know, we're we're just gonna you know take the book, pay pay the collector. And uh, and just keep the book as it is. So we'll we'll cross that bridge, you know. But yeah, we're, we'll certainly, you know, we we've got some things in place that are able to help us uh, determine if the books are swapped or not. Mm -hmm. Matt, really appreciate you yeah. taking the time today. This is, I think, super important. You know, we do feel really close to CGC, and that's why you know we get hurt when something goes wrong because we feel like you know, oh no, our CGC. You know, we also want to protect CGC in a in a weird way. That is what we're doing. That it doesn't always sound that way, but that is why we sound the alarms because mm -hmm. we want to take care of the community as well. And, and that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're looking out for our community, fellow members, and you know the people that are really you know wondering what's going on. So much much thanks to you for that for for kind of being out there and letting all the people know what's going on so. yeah absolutely my pleasure my pleasure yeah I'm, I'm happy here to to do it and uh you know i always enjoy seeing everybody at the shows and and, and when i'm out so uh you know i'll be seeing everybody here in 2024 uh yeah. here's to a new happy year for everybody happy yeah happy, uh, collecting to everybody and uh yeah and uh yeah thank you again for everything you guys are doing and then uh, i'm sure we'll, we'll circle back to this at some point in the future Sounds yeah. good. Totally. Yeah. And uh, Manu, as always, thank you. And Matt and uh, everybody, don't forget to, uh, you know, keep your eye on the list. And, you know, if you have anything to report, the email address is in the description below. But uh, look forward to updating you soon about this. But uh, thanks again to Matt Nelson, president of CGC, the 9.9 .9 newsstand, Manu. And uh, I guess I'll thank myself. <laughs> thank you, Dave. <laughs> <All right. laughs> thanks, guys. Yep. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. What do you think about the interview? And hopefully going forward, we're going to hear a lot more from Matt. If you're interested in following the 9.9 .9 newsstand, Manu, his Instagram link is right down in the description below. You can find all my links in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week on the West Coast Avengers for another great interview.